Hey, everybody, this is Davis with Con Freaks and Geeks, and I would like to welcome you to another episode of Pop Culture Gems. This is a series where we talk to amazing creators, artists, cosplayers, voice actors, and so much more. If you uh, want to check out more of the series, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel, the CFG channel, or you can uh, listen to it on any podcast services. Uh, if you want to check out all the fantastic geeky content in one area, you can always check out our main website, confreaksgeeks.com, for the whole package. My guest this episode is a voice actor who has had an illustrious career in voice, voicing memorable cartoon characters. He has been a uh, been on shows like G.I. Joe Sigma 6, Yu-Gi-Oh!, and so many more, but I know him personally as Grand Admiral Thrawn as a narrator in the many Star Wars books. I got Mark Thompson uh, with me today. How are you doing, my dude? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so like, uh, I well, first of all, I, I gotta kind of put a little bit of the fangirl in me a little bit because I've been reading like <laughs> these these books like forever. But uh, it's so great to see uh, have you on here. Uh, uh, well, first off, I just want to know, uh, uh, like, first question, like, who is Mark Thompson? Like, what if, uh, what is it? Who, like, what are you? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that's a very profound question. I don't know if I can <laughs> adequately answer. Who am I? It's like inside, uh, this, inside the Actors Guild studio question right, right. there. <laughs> I am an onion with many layers. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I grew up in upstate New York. Uh, I was kind of a, you know, a theater kid, and I was in a speech and debate team and uh, kind of fell into, you know, musical theater and, and, and theater in high school. And that's when I kind of discovered something that I was okay at that I really enjoyed doing. And then everything just kind of snowballed from there and I, I moved to new york city to try to pursue it and i landed in voiceover um and uh and i love it it's uh i think a lot of it was just because i i watched too much tv growing up and i would would mimic things that i you know heard there <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a big goofball i'm a nerd i'm a, a dad and a husband and uh and uh yeah i just i i'm, I'm very lucky because I, I i love what i do that is awesome. Like, uh, uh, I mean, like when I was looking at your list of different like uh, shows, it's funny because it's, it's like, when, especially with voice actors, it's very interesting to me because it's like you don't ever see the face or you don't tag the person's voice to the face, and right. then you look at the list of all the things that you have done in uh, in this, and then I'm like. Well, I just did a simple IMDb check. I'm like the the first reference is like back in 1990, and I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's it's so amazing to me. So like, yeah, uh, cool. uh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, do you ever feel like uh, uh, feel like one kind of voice acting uh, gig is more difficult than another? I mean, like what I mean by that is kind of like you know, I mean, you've been in gaming, animation, uh, vi like cartoon, anime, like uh, right. uh, voiceovers. Like, is there one that's harder than the others uh, w uh, when you do this kind of thing? Um, that's a really good question. I, they all have their own unique challenges. Um, so if I had to pick one, I would actually probably say that the audiobooks are the most challenging just because they're like, you know, if, if commercials are a sprint, uh, audiobooks are the marathon, you know, like they, there's just, you're, you're in the studio from like 10 in the morning till sometimes six at night. And, uh, it's, it's, three, four, five days. And it's just, and there's a lot of preparation work that has to go into it beforehand. So they are the most amount of work in terms of, you know, just all, everything that goes into it. Um, but, you know, everything's got its challenges like video games and animation. Sometimes I'll have sessions where you're, you're screaming <laughs> like nonstop <laughs> and you're only in there for a half hour, hour, but like your voice is shot for a couple of days after because of all the you know, the battle scenes or, or the, you know, battle cries and everything. So, um, and, and, you know, and then commercial work, it's like you're, the, the, they'll spend two hours on one sentence trying to finesse it to get it just right. And the, the amount of like, you know, mental, you know, focus <laughs> it takes to like try to figure out what do they want? Like, what is it they're looking for? You know, like that can be challenging. So everything's got its own unique uh, set of hurdles. Yeah have to jump over but um but i think if i had to pick one it would be the audiobooks oh, okay yeah i i like uh i was just thinking about like with the audiobooks itself uh in itself it's like 
you're you're literally reading like a whole book and uh like it could be like 30 chapters and stuff and yeah yeah and i just i didn't know like how like normally do you know like how there's a guild like uh the voice acting guild there's a certain period of time it's usually work i don't know does that also go into the audiobook side or is there something a little different I don't know. I need to look into that, actually. <laughs> you can't be in there too long, no. <laughs> um, I think, I don't know, actually. Um, I know I know. with video games, they, they've kind of cracked down on that more recently because they did, wanted to make sure that people weren't hurting themselves. But um, I don't know if there's any rules about that. I, th- I think uh, it's up to the narrator and the director, I guess, to figure out the best way they want to work. But typically... Uh-huh. When, when I'm doing them, we, we go all day. So how, oh, so how so oh, like what's a what's a session like in just the just in reading a book and for an audiobook session? I mean, so I guess everybody's process is different, but but for me, it's like obviously I'm reading the book ahead of time, and I'm trying to figure out what character voices I want to do, um, and then once we get in the booth. Um, for me, it's like 10 till like about six at night and we'll, we'll, they'll let me out for like bathroom and food and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, how gracious um, of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, on the star Wars ones in particular, like I usually, I work with a director, uh, but on the star Wars ones in particular, Kevin Thompson is like amazing. And he has kind of perfected this art form in my opinion. And he, he, he'll know like, what music cue he's going to use with the way I read this particular line or, you know, so like, he'll be like, okay, I know what's, you know, I know what sting I want to use at that moment. And so he'll kind of guide me and, and like, he'll be like, okay, that was great. Move on. Or no, you missed the sense of that. Let's do that one again. You know, uh, there's a lot of, for me, a lot of starting and stopping because I will get like temporary dyslexia and start inverting (laughs) words and phrases and like, you know, when you're staring at the page long enough, you, you get punchy and, you know, um, oh so it, you know, the, the editors have a lot of work to do with me. <laughs> so, um, I mean, like, yeah. I'm going to give you a break on that a little bit though. Cause I mean, six hours, re- like, I mean, like it took me literally just listen. Just, I, I mean, and I'm doing it lazily. I'm listening to you read the book to me. <laughs> uh, most of the time. And it took me a month just to read yeah. Thrawn Ascendancy. And then like, yeah. you're telling, and you're telling me that, that like in si- you're doing six hour sessions, reading this book straight on and yeah, yeah. like, you have to read it in a perfect way. Like, right. so on top yeah. of that, I think, man, now that that that's something that that that, that you, it's very commendable on your on your behalf. I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Paul and Kevin make it look better than I actually am. There's a lot of starting and stopping and flubbing in there, but uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, I I feel like I have gotten better at it over the years because it's like a muscle you have to exercise. But it's it's very challenging to like read straight through without making any mistakes. And and I think January Lavoy. Mm. is the one person I know that, that can do it somewhat perfectly. Like I know I hear she makes mistakes, but uh, <laughs> like Ke- Kevin has told me stories about her just being able to like go page after page after page just perfectly. So. Oh, she sounds like a master reader on top. Yeah. Of me. She, <laughs> like, no, she's very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, like in the, I think it would be safe to say that you're a veteran when it comes to being a voice of uh, voiceovers. You know, you've been in the industry for a long period of time. So, uh, yeah, is there a serious? Yeah, <laughs> it's true though. I still feel 18, but I, I, uh, I don't look it, and I don't. Uh, <laughs> you're right. I've been doing it for a while now. Not saying that you're old, but I am saying <laughs> you're a big deal. <laughs> it's a <great> beard. <laughs> oh man, but is there a series, uh, a series or game that you like, something that you've like wanted to do, uh, but you haven't had the chance to do it yet in your career? Yes. Uh, now I've been very lucky, so I, I I feel silly asking for anything because I feel like I've gotten to do Star Wars and GI Joe and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and uh, X Men and a lot of really cool stuff. So, but I would love to do Star Trek. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big Star Trek fan. So I would, I would love to either do a Star Trek audiobook or Star Trek animation. Uh, and I'd, I'd love to uh, dip back into to Marvel. Like I, I got to do a motion comic for the X-Men, mm. but I would, I would love to do like some Marvel animation or uh, I, I did do a Marvel audiobook and that was really fun. Um, but I, oh, I'd love cool. to, 
uh, maybe do some of the Marvel animations. Oh, that'd be pretty good. That's really cool. I mean, yeah. I, I would never have pegged you as a Trekkie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. No, it's, I'm rare because I, I, I love both pretty passionately. And, and I know usually those two forces are like against each other. Fighting each other. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I have like Star Trek action figures on my shelf along with my Yodas and stuff. So like I, I uh, yeah, it's funny because like growing up, I, I would like when I was younger, I was more into Star Trek. Well, I, wait, that's not true. When I was a young, young kid, I was into Star Wars. Then as like a teenager, I was like really way more into Star Trek. And my, my dad's an engineer and uh, very intellectual. And I, I think we bonded a little over Star Trek. But then uh, when I got older again, I, I kind of fell. The, the needle went back more towards Star Wars again. So, uh, But I, I, I still love both. I see. Uh, yeah. What's your favorite Star Trek, though? Uh, Next Generation. Uh, just everyone... just because I, I grew up on that one, and that's, you know, that's the one that was... Everyone says Next Generation. No one gives love for Deep Space Nine. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, okay, I this is embarrassing to admit, but I never finished Deep Space Nine because it was right when I was going to college, and I didn't uh -huh. have a TV in my room, so I need to go back and... And watch TV oh man like like it, it's don't get me wrong next generation is it's great i mean there's, yeah. like uh there's a lot of things that that's in it especially I, my girlfriend uh like we i went back i think not that long ago we actually watched it again i'm like this still holds up it's really a really good series uh but like man d space nine i'm thinking i've always thought of it it's like okay so they they gave Cisco literally nothing. The Federation gave him nothing except like like five people and said oh, wow. here like here's a condemned uh, a, a condemned spaceship and uh, right, right. we need you to make to make it work. <laughs> and then it's yeah. like okay, the seven seasons of this nonsense and uh, but not Deep Space Nine, man. I, I gotta uh, finish it because I, yeah. I I only got I didn't I didn't get through the Dominion Wars and I and I knew I would have loved that. So oh I yeah. That. Oh yeah, those definitely. I think yeah, but, man. But it's it's always gonna be there for the take. It just I'm yeah, just yeah. saying a nice courtesy uh, push for you to go check it out. So. <laughs> I will. <laughs> there you go. All right, and uh, and uh, for me, when I uh, when I look when I when I usually look for a Star Wars book because like I like to multitask. So audiobooks is one of my favorite things. And I know we're not being sponsored by Audible, but we should be. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I will say this though: like uh, when I look into Star Wars audiobooks, like uh, the first thing I always check when I uh, uh who's narrating it is you I mean oh wow like, thank you yeah yeah I really like it just like really it really resonates when I when I uh when I when when you're reading the stories I love the characters that you make and everything so that's really oh, cool. thanks a lot yeah so that's uh cool. yeah and and that goes to show how amazing you really are when you come and do that kind of stuff so like I'm wanting to know like uh like what is the origin story of you kind of getting into this like you know the Star Wars universe of books you know like what like, right, how'd right. you get in um, so it's pretty wild because, um, I, I was not much of a reader growing up. Like I didn't read books for fun or, you know, I was the guy in class where we had to read a book. I would get the cliff notes version and, and try to like, you know, watch the movie instead and, and, and try to pass the test based on that. So, um, my agent called and said, you know, well, Hey, have you ever done an audiobook? And, I'm thinking, you know, I didn't want to read books in school. I, don't, I really don't want to read a book now. So I was trying to kind of talk my way out of it. And I was like, no, not really. I'm not sure they're really my thing. And and then she was like, well, what about a Star Wars audiobook? Have you ever, would you ever do that? I was like, oh, wait, yes, yes, yes. Hold on. Yes, please, please. <laughs> um, and then they sent me a couple of pages from the book and I like prayed about it. I was like, God, please let me get this. I like rewatched the movies. I was practicing the voices and uh, I went in and uh, I, I read for Kevin, for Kevin Thompson, and they were trying to get someone to be the voice for a nine book series, which I don't think I knew that at the time, but it was for the Legacy of the Force uh, mm. series. And uh, I, and I got it. And I, and I think that I, I, pr I think I probably got hired because I could do, I was coming from an animation background. So I, I did an okay job mimicking some of the legacy characters like Han and Luke and Leia and Admiral Akbar and things like that. But uh, I definitely had to learn on the job about how to narrate an audiobook because that was like, I, I was spending all this time on the dialogue and, and when we got to like the scenes where characters are talking to each other um, to me, that was like 
animation or, or almost like doing a one man show or something. And, and that came more naturally. But when it came to like reading the prose and like the description of the room or, or the inner monologue, I, it was, it was hard for me to kind of breathe life into that. And, uh, Kevin, I always tell this story, but Kevin like really helped coach me through that and helped me understand that I had to make that engaging as well. Not just the character voices, but really make the, the prose uh, really important and stand out and give that emotional weight. And, uh, and I, I always thank him for that. Cause I, uh, it, it makes a huge difference. And I, and I, I it was, uh, you know, it was basically my first ever audiobook was, was legacy of the force. <laughs> and oh, now wow. it's like, I've done, including books outside of star Wars, like over a hundred audio books now. So, Oh, that's a, you got, it, it kind of grew yeah. into something new. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I kind do. of enjoy it. I, I enjoy it now. Like it, I was as much as I was dreading it, like, and now I get it. Now I get why books are cool. <laughs> <laughs> it only took, yeah. Well, I mean, Hey, I totally agree with you there though, too, but like, I didn't, I didn't know that. So I didn't know that you got in with legacy of the force. That was your first book. It wasn't, yeah. Was Legacy of the Force the nine? Did you do all nine parts, or did you do yep. one of the couple of? Oh wow! Yeah, I did all nine of those. Yeah. Wait, that was was that was that Thrawn? I wasn't sure. No, no, no. Uh, Legacy of the Force was well because what we did was when I did Thrawn, we went back and we we did I did the the twenty fifth anniversary of those books. Yes. Okay. Um, so some I think those had been recorded previously by someone else, and then for the twenty fifth anniversary, we re recorded the Thrawn trilogy which chronologically came before Legacy of the Force. Right. Um, but we were doing the anniversary edition. That was the one with Mara Jade gets killed by Ben Solo? Yeah. I believe. It's been a while, but yes, yes, <laughs> that's yes. Been, Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. trying to think. Okay, that's what it was. Oh, sorry, spoilers, by the way. But still. <laughs> ah, it's Legends now. <laughs> <laughs> legends, exactly, exactly. Well, that's cool, though. Okay, that, uh, yeah, that, that's, wow, I didn't know that was, I didn't know that was the very first one that you did. Uh, yeah. Did, did you ever work with, uh, 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 with, with, like, anything Old Republic, like, with uh, Drew, Car Drew Carpishan? Yes, yes. I think. I should have double checked. I'm, was it Revan? I, think, I believe. I think I did Revan. Yeah, and I did. Um, there was another one that I did. Oh, well, uh, Dark Bane. Malgus or, or Bane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was like yeah. That was my introduction to you. It was like I got oh, into cool. yeah. Like uh, my friend said, "Hey, you got to read the Star Wars books." I'm like reading <laughs> so yeah, I, don't yeah. to, I don't want to read it so uh, right. i i read uh revan first because i was playing old republic the game for a okay, bit cool. and yeah. then uh and then i was like oh this is actually not that bad of a book and then i started like yeah. drew, drew carpishan and then um my friend told me oh you gotta read dark bane he's ruthless and i'm like okay so yeah, yeah. i was like man this is a really good story <laughs> this is a really good uh yeah, they, were, they were awesome yeah great series man it's too bad yeah. they're all legends <laughs> now but <laughs> well they're still you still get to enjoy them like they're still you yeah know, yeah that's true story. and all they're right. drawing on a lot of the legend stuff and and kind of reinserting it now so it's so it's kind of really cool how they're they're, they're doing that and like the shows and the comics like they're they're going back to the well to some of those things and then just you know, tweaking it a little bit. So I definitely will. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree. Like, I mean, like, who would have thought that Grand Admiral Thrawn? We were, were actually. Right. Uh, <laughs> by the way, guys, if you haven't seen The Mandalorian, I'm sorry, but uh, <laughs> uh, but like, I mean, like, they're actually making him canon. Uh, technically, he was a uh, they 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 did inklings of the series with the uh, Star Wars Rebels. So yeah, like, yeah. so he's a legit character now, and like that dude is my number one man. <laughs> like, yeah. like uh, overall. Right. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, before, uh, like, before narrating Star Wars stories, um, I'm, and obviously you are you are a fan of Star Wars. You're a big fan of Star big Wars. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you can't be in the pit of uh, the Mandalorian <laughs> right yeah, now. Yeah. I'm saying that you're not. <laughs> the crest, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, like, um, and who are your favorite characters to play when you narrate uh, Star Wars story characters? I mean, just for pure nostalgia, like anytime I get to do Yoda or or Han or Luke, it's like a huge treat for me. And, you know, do you or do not? There is no try. It's like, oh, <laughs> so, you know, so one, any, you know, yeah, the one I love, the, the, the one I literally loved was the uh, was your Lando. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I love your What do we have here? <laughs> <laughs> I just love the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, it's so great. Oh, yeah. Man, that's good. 
So you're just the classic, the classic guys with a with the well, I mean with well, anyone who does Yoda, it's always gonna have a fun time with him. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, and it's it's fun to create new ones too. Like it's fun to be a part of creating a new uh character. Like like uh, in the aftermath series, uh Chuck Wendig wrote this really cool character called Mr. Bones, and it was like a a, a battle droid that got reprogrammed to kind of be the 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 best friend bodyguard to this, you know, kid. And it was uh it's like I will perform violence now, Roger, Roger. You know, and it's like this really like you know <laughs> sociopathic droid. <laughs> and it was, uh, so that was fun to kind of create a voice for, and and uh, or, or to like you know it's the battle droid voice, obviously, but it's it's fun. Oh, so that's see, yeah, that's always awesome. That's always cool. And I mean, then like like I guess it goes into this really easily. But uh, most people remember like you know your core characters, like your Grand Admiral Thrawn, Han Solo's, Luke's, Leia's, and stuff like that. Uh, but those, I mean, those are great. I always love those characters. But like, uh, but I'm amazed of the amount of difference, like si- your side characters, mm-hmm. like uh, that uh, that you give life in the books too. Uh, like, do you have a process of giving the voice actors uh, like some of the voices that you give on the side characters? Characters because like some of the things that like, like there's there, there's voices of that looks like you're talking while you're inhaling and exhaling at the same time <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, yeah. And I'm just yeah. like I was like oh okay he's this he's this alien race but then he can't breathe while he's talking and stuff you know <laughs> yeah. like like I wanted to know like what is your process with that kind of stuff yeah um so a big part of it is is when I first read the book. I will write down anytime someone speaks or has a line of dialogue. And then I'll write down anything that the author tells me about them. Like if they're male or female, if they're human or alien, if, if they're an alien that's appeared in the Star Wars universe before, I'll go on Wikipedia and try to figure out what, you know, if there's pictures of it or what they describe the race as, or, you know, um, and then sometimes the author will describe their voice in, in kind of, onomatopoeic ways or very poetic ways that like, you know, like, like dry rasp or high shrill or squeak or, you know, or, um, a low, there was one voice I did recently that the author described it as like almost subsonic, you know? Mm -hmm. So like all those clues kind of give me, put me in the ballpark of like, okay, what, what, what general area do we need to play with? And then, um, I had this really cool acting teacher, uh, at NYU that just talked about like using the different uh, resonators uh, in your, in your voice to kind of create different sounds in, in your instrument, you know? So, so I'll, sometimes I'll play around with placing different character voices in different, like, you know, in my, in my nasal cavity or, or in my chest or like, you know, in my head voice and, or falsetto things and just playing around with different textures and things like that. And, Then I might play around with different accents to try to make people sound different or distinct. Um, And then sometimes like with Star Wars specifically, like I'll think about like the the puppetry or the masks, you know, and I'll I'll think I'll I'll try to like imagine like like whenever I do act by I always imagine like my mouth shaped like the puppet mask, you know, and like (laughs) the fact that I can't move my lips very far. Like it helps me kind of get into Akbar and just like kind of positioning my my voice in that way. Or like, you know, I, I did a Kubaz in, in one of the mm. certain point of view books and I pictured that that weird Yeah, the tendril kind of, kind of thing. Things, yeah, yeah. So so sometimes all that stuff just helps me kind of find something. And then I record it on my phone and listen to it in the booth when it comes time to do the book. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, there's so many that you would think of you know, like to there's so many that you've done i can't even really remember any, all of them but like i know the most recent ones like i saw in thrawn ascendancy because i mean you're uh-huh. basically being like a whole different cast of different kinds of chiss as yeah, long yeah. as well as like i mean you got the most formal one which is thrawn but i love like uh arlani for instance like yeah, arlani yeah, 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 yeah. felt like it was like she had to stick up her butt all the, <laughs> the whole time <laughs> You know, yes. <laughs> you know, but it, it's like she's the very condescending best friend of, you know, of, of right. Thrawn at the same time. But then all of a sudden you switched over to uh, Cheery, the like nine year old little girl that likes to cry <laughs> and stuff. I'm like, man, this dude is all over the place when it comes to these kinds of things. Yeah, it's you know? very challenging. Yeah, very <laughs> awesome job, though. I definitely loved it. But uh, uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. So uh, like also. um 
and it's not fair to me to ask like you know what's your favorite uh, you know star wars story i mean you've done tons of them now so but uh, but i will say like is there any like star wars story that kind of sticks out to you and uh, it could be something that you weren't a part of directly or or something that you were a part of like something that like you know something that kind of gave you something memorable uh in uh in the process oh wow uh yeah, I mean, there's, there's, mm-hmm. it's like you said, like there's, there's tons I could list off. Um, uh, Dark Disciple has a special place in my heart just because uh, it was fun to revisit a lot of the Clone Wars characters, but like Christy Golden did such an amazing job with uh, Asajj, Ventress, and uh, Quinlan Boss, and just uh, it was like one of the first times that I was able to kind of get carried away, like not in a bad way, but get kind of like really i got emotional in the booth like like during some of their scenes like i was still under control but it it was like it was like as an actor you kind of are constantly trying to kind of get in those moments where you're really in touch with what's going on in the story that the emotion just kind of comes up instead of you having to manufacture it um so i felt that way when we were narrating that one and that was pretty amazing um and then i got to do the novelization of um the force awakens Mm. and uh we did that before the movie came out so that was a very special experience just because it felt like um Mm. you know i was kind of uh, it it felt very special to get like the secret script with your name on it and like i wasn't allowed to read it at home i had to go to an office and they like locked me in the office they disconnected the computer from the internet so i couldn't that's how serious they are about that yeah oh yeah no it was crazy and like if i had to go to the bathroom i had to get like someone to lock the room behind me go to the bathroom come back they unlock the room um and then just knowing all the information before the movie came out was like it was it was like a a funny thing because like i almost there was a part of me that was like questioning should i even do this because i don't want to spoil it you know Mm. (laughs) but my wife was like are you crazy why would you not do this i was like oh yeah right i should do it um but then it, so it was, it was just weird sitting on the secret of like han dying and like you know how hard uh, would that be especially to like not tell your your family or anyone like it, it was read it. so hard <laughs> like you know, and especially as, as as each new trailer would come out people would speculate and i'd just be like uh-huh uh-huh yeah okay yeah. <laughs> you have to so, like you gotta have to throw yourself out of the conversation like you have to walk right. out away from it oh my yeah, god yeah. but then Man. opening night like instead of watching the screen, I was kind of like looking side to side to see what people's reactions are going to be because I was like, "Oh, this is going to be cool." You have the chip um, so on your was... shoulder of being the inside man of everything that was happening throughout this whole Star Wars mania when it was first when the new the new series was coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was. Man. It was so that was a fun memory and experience. So. Oh man, that is so cool though. That, that's a yeah. really cool experience, uh, and. Uh, uh and i mean being part of the star wars universe for as long as you have like you know i mean you were there prior to you know, with the extended universe and then they switched it over to you know legends and stuff uh like now since you're seeing like you know how disney has taken the reins over i mean since they purchased you know lucas arts back in the day uh what do you think like the the, the steps are doing like right now for instance like the mandalorian like what do you think like uh uh, what do you think about like what they're doing, uh, the direction they're going with like the Mandalorian and stuff? Oh my gosh. I mean, I, I love it. Like I, mm. you know, I, I know people will accuse me of being a shill, but like, I, I, I love all of it. Like I, I'm, I'm here <laughs> for it all. Uh, I, I feel like Mandalorian is such great star Wars and such great storytelling. And, you know, I, I am obsessed with it and I, I, I love I love the characters. I, I love all the messages of, of family and, and like the, uh, I just, I just think it's a totally encapsulated the spirit of star Wars. And uh, I can't wait. Like, I don't know if you saw, but yesterday they, they, they have the Disney investors meeting or whatever. And they, they announced all this other stuff. And I was like, they went just saying, yeah. <laughs> like, they yeah. just said, Hey, the Mandalorian's <laughs> working. It's time to go all in. Yeah. <laughs> just, so i can't wait and like the idea that the the ahsoka show and the uh rangers of the new republic are gonna combine with mandalorian into one epic story yeah. event i was like 
Like that one sentence was like, what? <laughs> like what? No way! <laughs> so oh, we're getting like a Marvel treatment in Star Wars now. Like it's all going to build towards this major thing. It's but so, it seems kind of weird so that they're about. going back and forth, like with like you know they bring in back the Bad Batch, which which I have to say yeah. that is a cool story that they added those the new those uh, uh-huh. those people those clones. Uh, I just kind of want to know what direction they're going to go with that. Like like are they I it's like from the trailer? I couldn't tell if. They were fighting for with, or against with yeah exactly like with the empire against it like maybe it'll be both like maybe they'll start off and then they'll switch mm. or I don't know yeah I mean that'll be yeah that would, that would be very very interesting I'm actually really hyped to seeing that one but uh the uh, uh but like uh but like you know it's weird though because uh I mean don't get me wrong the the new the new trilogy was it's all right uh, and, uh-huh. I mean I'm kind of old school so four five and six are my dudes. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, but like, uh, but it just seems weird that um, the Mandalorian, from what I've when I was watching it, what I love about Star Wars is the universe around it. It's not about the Skywalker legacy. The Skywalker okay. legacy is a piece of it, but right. like the 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 world building of this is the environments of these people are living inside this world, and yeah. and they are clearly showing it when he's traveling, you know, to all these different kinds of places, you know, and. Right. I, that's what I love about that kind of stuff, and uh, so yeah, and yeah. that's and it's kind of making me kind of fall in love with Star Wars again because it, at first it was like you know I don't know if I want to be dealing with this for a little bit, okay. you know? yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, but no, I totally agree. I totally, I totally get you. I think they're doing a great job. John Favreau is just the goat oh. right now. <laughs> totally. <laughs> you imagine like launching the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the Mandalorian? Like that's like amazing. I know, right? Like both of those things under your belt. It's like, holy moly. <laughs> it's what's even crazier is that, like, when he was in the Marvel Universe, it's like you didn't even know it was him when he was, like, you know, he was happy. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The side character is like, oh, yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, I was the director of that. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? Totally. Very amazing. Very, very cra- crafty guy, man, I will have to say. He, they did a good move with him. Uh, and uh, just and also being uh, uh, I know you've been doing Star Wars books like like I was saying before uh, uh, with Lucas Arcs and stuff, but like overall, like the direction of the books itself, like uh, like I mean, how are you like uh, are, like overall? Do you think like what do you think of uh, like the way it's heading? Because like in a way, back in the day before Disney was doing it, there was very little overhead. I mean, I'm assuming there was not as much overhead with Lucas Arcs to be a part of it. But now, since Disney has taken the reins of it, they're basically, I mean, you know, Disney keeps, like, they, they are very protective of their IPs. Uh, yeah. Like, like how like how different is it now than what it was back in the day? Like, do you, do you think it's a, for the positive or is it a negative, if, if you like to say? I, I, think, I think it's for the positive because I think the potential for, I think the potential for it all connecting is really great. Like, um, cause like the, the, there were some great things in some of the books leading up to the movies that were like not essential to understanding the movie, but they, they were great little like Easter eggs that when you saw the movie, you're like, Oh, that's the thing from the book. You know, it's like, so that, I think that's really cool. Um, and I think, I think like initially when, um, like Rise of Skywalker, Last Jedi, Force Awakens were coming out. I think obviously the books had to um, maybe take a, 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 a pause on exploring what happens to Han, Luke, and Leia because we didn't know what the filmmakers were going to do, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think there was maybe a little bit of more like pause or caution, you know? But um, I think like moving forward with like, like the High Republic and like, um, like different things, like we're, we're going to get to explore some really great eras and have some great original storytelling. And I think, so I, I, I think the books are, are, are really awesome and, and, and able to kind of go off in the same way that some of the TV shows are doing like stories within the universe or stories within the worlds. Um, I think the books are, are starting to really dig deeper into that stuff and kind of like, you know, but then have these really cool connections to the cartoons and to the movies. And, you know, so in a way it's kind of the best of both worlds because you're, you know, for, for a while the books were the movies cause you weren't getting any new anything, you know? <laughs> so, right, right. Um, so like, you know, so in that, so in one sense they were free to explore stories with some of the main characters that you love from the movies. 
but but now it's like kind of like what you were saying earlier like now it's like we get to really expand the world and, and kind of get to know even more characters and, and more stories you know kind of throughout the entire star wars galaxy and so mm. well, that's that good. is pretty cool yeah, that's that's definitely good because that was the one gripe I kind of had with the uh, the extended universe. It's like right, right. There was no control over what was being done. It was so <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh, people yeah. are talking about like old republic, and then people are talking about you know post uh, empire and stuff, and like right, right, right. Very crazy, but now uh, that's cool. That's very cool. And uh, uh, I definitely like that. I definitely enjoy that. Um, and. Uh, and one of my personal favorite writers in the Star Wars universe itself is uh, obviously is uh, Timothy Zahn. Uh, yeah. The dude is like is pure gold when it comes to his books and stuff. But like, yeah, uh, yeah when uh, when I see that he released the new Star Wars books, I automatically assume that you're going to be a part of it because yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's always it, it's all it's like you're like the perfect pairing with him, like PB and J, dude. All uh, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, Oh god, extra crunchy, man. Always extra right. crunchy. <laughs> uh, was there something that naturally made you, you know, want to work together? Or was this was this like something that you like when you read a book, or is this something that was kind of like beyond your hands on, you know, pairing pairing with Zahn? Yeah, the, the honest answer is it was beyond my hands. Like okay. I, I was just lucky enough to be considered for it and uh and and they they asked me to do it and I was very grateful and uh, and I, I, I've gotten to meet him a few times and, and he's incredibly kind and incredibly smart and, and knows that character inside and out. And, and, uh, so it's, it's an honor to be kind of adjacent to him or, you know, uh, to be in the sandwich in, in some way, shape or form. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you kind of gave life to his character. I mean, like I said, like, I mean, Grand Admiral Thrawn, I mean, uh, you said that when you did the re the re list the the rewrite of uh, the 25th anniversary of uh, you know uh, of the uh, of his series of the trilogy, it's like like prior to that it was it was there it was known but but like when you gave your Grand Admiral Thrawn really kind of stuck it out uh, stuck it out and it seemed like you made it like the blueprint of what most people are doing who do play it in the, like in rebels and stuff was eventually, it was essentially what the way you did it, you know? So I mean, <laughs> I mean, you well, gave, most of that's in the writing, but, but yeah, but I appreciate it. Thank you. You gave, <laughs> but, you gave the, you gave them the accent, man. I mean, like, <laughs> you gave them the accent, you gave them the, the, the smugness, the, the, yeah, the yeah. feel of it, man. You got, you got, you got to give yourself some sort of credit towards it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh man but uh no but uh i definitely love it and uh i mean have you ever really noticed that like has your thrawn ever really changed throughout i mean the multiple times that you've used it by the way like i mean since there's been well yeah actually because um uh when i did the 25th anniversary versions it's a slightly different um accent like I i'm doing it more a little bit lower and in a little bit more straight Brit. And then it's when, when he got reintroduced in rebels mm. uh, and then we did the new Thrawn stories that are, that are kind of tied into that. Uh, I tried to actually mimic more what Lars Mickelson is doing on the cartoon. So it is, it is slightly a uh, uh, different. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, mm. uh, influencing, it. but it's, it's still in that same ball, ballpark of like, he's, you know, hyper intelligent very calm cool and collected you know so it's just a little bit different are you mad uh, so are you did you have to match with lars uh lars mickelson uh more more closer to the because of because of his because of his thrown we, we chose we, we chose to uh kevin and i so I, I uh i i didn't there wasn't like a on high you know command that we do it that way but i, I just wanted it to be consistent with with what the cartoons were doing so so oh. I, I tried to kind of get it closer to that. Okay, that's so awesome. No, no, no that's great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, Mark, it was great talking to you. I love geeking out with you. It's always fun. Yeah, like, it's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there any? Uh, is there anything you're wanting? Like, is there anything else you wanting to plug or anything that's um, going on? The, the uh, I mean, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Certain point of view just came out, and I'm, I do a bunch of uh, the short stories on that one, and that's mm -hmm. really su super fun and re really amazing. Um, and yeah, that that's about it. Uh, yeah, the, 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 there's there's more stuff coming, and I'm 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 excited to be a part of it. 
Awesome. Great. Well, thank you for your time, Mark. I uh, really, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, and uh, the definitely, guys, uh, definitely check out his stuff. If you haven't checked out Audible itself, once again, not sponsored, but definitely check out his stuff out. Uh, 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 his stuff out on uh, Audible. Uh, Audible. They have really good Star Wars stories on there. Uh, but uh, uh, but if you definitely want to check out more content uh, from us, go to our main website, confreaksandgeeks.com, uh, and check out Pop Culture Jam. Well, this is Davis signing off. Y'all take it easy.